So Truerell is actually a robot in a science fiction novel. Um, I, I don't know how that guy is pronounced. But, um, I guess it was a s sort of East European author. I don't know how he would pronounce it. I, I didn't really know about that uh, the, this uh, novel character, uh, but uh, I don't. I didn't know about him when I tried to pick a name for for this project. But I wanted it to be since it's about manipulating to your, uh, URLs, it would be like T T R for URLs. So that's uh, I figured t true realm would be a. But then I thought it was just a fun coincidence that it would also be a, a weird robot. It seems to be a weird robot. I haven't read the, the novel. And it, what's interesting is that the, the novel is written about this robot that only does things uh, with words starting with the same letter. And the same letter is different in different tr language translations of the book. So I think it's E in English, and it's I think it's S in Swedish, which has to be an amazing uh, challenge to the translator to convert everything, because it's not the same words. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, the problem is, of course, that it's really hard to to parse URLs. And I got into it just uh, just struck me uh, when when we worked with URL. You know, I I mess with URLs all the time. So one of these days, someone wanted to do something with URLs in related to curl, and they wanted some information about a URL part when working with curl. And it struck me that it's such a difficult task, and I really couldn't make <laughs> invent a way to just squeeze that into curl <laughs> as well. So yeah, it struck me that we should really provide a more convenient, easy to use tool outside of curl to just help sh anyone who wor worked with shell scripts to just uh, manage and produce URLs in, in an easier way to well, to feed it into curl, more or less. Be because a lot of scripts do a lot of curl fiddling, and it's hard to parse and extract and set and change URLs in a shell script. Uh, and not the least because mixing URL parsers you know, is, of course, a, a common security problem thing. Uh, I, I talked to the guys who published a paper last year at some point about this, that they found numerous new security problems by just different applications using diff uh, a number of, of URL parsers in a weird combinations, and some of them will think something, and the other one will think it differently because URLs are messy suckers and there's really no URL standard that we all follow. Um, there are some standards and some standards and there are everything in between and no one is following uh, any of them to the letter and everyone has their own opinion about what's a URL. So by providing a script that uses the exact same parser that curl is, so if you want to parse uh, URLs the way curl does, it makes sense to have a separate tool for it. So why not do it? Yeah, that was fun. Uh, it was also easy to do. Pretty quick hack. It just took me not many hours to do the first version um, and just put it out there. So you can use that to extract any part of. There are basically 10 parts out in, in a URL. Get any of that part out of the URL, update or set any part of them, and you can then create a URL out of one of the set. <coughs> Some of the parts are mandatory, I guess needed, but maybe not for all kinds. But anyway, you can create URLs out of components and you can do things like apply a redirect. If you have a URL and you would apl uh, apply, uh, go to a relative URL from the first one, where do you end up? And and uh, also, since a lot of users, people are doing fun thing with the query part, the part out and to the right of the question mark, basically, you know, it's usually a set of key value pairs, and it also then has features to extract or set those parts, or trim off parts, uh, take away parts from the query, or even sort the query parts, and make sure that you can get a, a canonical version of the URL, per perhaps compare two different URLs, are they different or not, or verify that the URL is valid, and then again, valid in some kind of definition what is a valid URL? <laughs> valid according to true. Um, it, it's, uh, of course, hard, hard to define what's a URL. And uh, then you uh, 
every, everyone likes JSON these days, so you can output everything as JSON. So parse URL uh, output all the components as a JSON object. So you, if you, yeah, for, for the shell scripting and if you want to use JQ and so on. <coughs> and of course, you can do all of this on any number of URLs uh, on the command line. So just a tiny little thing that uh, operates on URLs. And so you can, for example, if you want to, you have a uh, URL, you want to change the host name, uh, just uh, ask it to set the host name and you get it uh, output the new URL. You can create <laughs> a URL out of components, set a host name, set a scheme, and you get it output the URL. Basically, removing the knowledge uh, of how a URL works from, from the script. You just you know what to do, uh, and operate operations on the URL. You can extract parts. I want to have the path part out of the URL. I want to get the port number, and in this case, for example, the, the port number is not even set in the URL, it's just implied because it's an HTTPS, so you can ask for the default port then used by the, the scheme. Or you can operate on the query, as I mentioned, for example, you can trim to remove parts of the query and just, for example, these common tracker qu uh, things like UTM underscore, remove that, and or you can get just, I just want to get the a part out of this, since th this is a common setup, you use the keys, key, a number of key values here, and it's a query, and you want to just get the the A part over there extracted. Nothing complicated, it's not advanced, but it helps uh, shell script users, basically. And um, everything this is in the uh, curl organization, um, where I am st still haven't done a one release I'm not sure exactly what I'm waiting for I haven't uh, I haven't done a lot of things recently it, it has pretty much stabilized it, it has maybe nowadays maybe 10 different command line options it has all these features and a few more um, so it, it's getting it's getting there it's pretty stable pretty I think it has worked really well to ac exercise the URL parser quite a lot. I found several, and I fixed several URL parsing problems. Um, I also added a few features to the URL parser in curl dedicated to, to true rule that we don't even use in curl. Um, in particular, I think uh, the translation from puny code back to IDM is not something we do in curl, but true rule. So I think it's been good, and I also have some other ideas on how to uh, also use true and going forward to verify the URL parser. I want to I want to make a I want to make a set of tests. You know, there's this uh, W the bot W uh, G working group that makes the URL specs that the browser people are uh, so happy about and they're using. They have a test suite with basically URLs that. URLs and a redirect to another URL, and they have it. I want to make a script that basically runs through their test suite and verify uh, verify those URLs with true rules and make sure that it handles them all like I think they should. Not the way the browsers do it, but the way true rules should do it. So it works. It's fairly solid. Um, we have, I mean, in in the curl test suite, we have. Uh, rather large amount of URL parsing tests. And I've added a bunch more, uh, particularly after having toyed with true and the parser and looked at the other test suites. And so uh, this one works really well as well. Um, so, and I'm, I'm kind of happy with the number of tests we have for true dedicated. So it works also really well. We have a bunch of people who are um, participating in true development. So some of them are eager to do pull requests as well, so I don't even do a lot of development on this. I'm mostly just sitting there and, and happy that other people are helping out. It is being shipped by a number of distros already, maybe 10, 15, I, I haven't really kept count, but a lot of people have sort of just adopted it. So at least in, in bleeding edge versions of a lot of distros and um, package managers that are shipping it. So it's getting out there. I understand that it'll take forever until Everyone will have it if, if that ever happens, but it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I think it's a cool tool. I, I will use it and I'm, I do use it. So I, I'm 
what I'm looking at next is basically doing a 1.0 release soon maybe um, we're talking about I, I know that ever since I <coughs> we introduced JSON output from the tool of course everyone then said what about JSON input um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know JSON a completely different beast uh, I'll parsing a lot of JSON suddenly uh, yeah but uh, it might be in, uh, m uh, maybe we can duck for it, so maybe there will be some JSON parsing to, to provide the object in the same way, input. I don't know. So, otherwise, it's, it's, n it's not going crazy. I mean, that's pretty much what it can do, right? Uh, I don't think we can invent a lot of other crazy things to do, because that it's supposed to be a small tool to manipulate your else. So Does it have any dependencies apart from libcurl is the only libcurl one. itself, and and, um, and then that has then brought other discussions, right? Because libcurl can do quite a lot more stuff than just doing URL parsing. Mm -hmm. So people have then brought up, oh, why why can't you sort of can we limit sort of narrow down the attack surface by making sure that libcurl can't do all these things that it could do when used by Truro? Or make a libtro. Ah, uh, exactly. <laughs> so should there be an, or a lib uh, URL parser exactly that yeah. both curl would use and true would use? Sure, you can do that, and that's sort of you know, we can discuss it. But it's also a lot more work <laughs> for the purpose of uh, exercising something that could be limiting an yeah. attack surface, maybe. Hmm. If, if you if you build curl as a static library and link it into a tool. Then you only get the parts of the URL parsing, not the rest. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, that would be one sort of build solution to it. Yes. So just build it with a static, but that's a kind of a hack too. But yes, sure, we can do it. Does it handle for in, in case anyone makes a difference URIs? Yeah, but uh, what is the URI? Is it the, uh, the uh, URI according to RFC thirty nine eighty six. Yeah, that that is basically what the URL is to curl uh, with. So yeah, sort of uh, roughly. So in in people's it. mind, a, a URL has the colon slash slash. Yeah, but uh, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so so basically, uh, so so it does not support any kind of URI. It's a it has a limited support, and, and I mean the the focus is for URLs that curl supports, right. and those are all colon slash slash yeah. style. So I think you, but so in in that regard, it's not a URI, but it's it, a subset of URIs it supports. So just to add, um, I wanted to use it uh, because we use uh, we have to use curls uh, uh, to identify each software component. The curl is the URI, right? Uh, but curl doesn't doesn't crack apart the, the it's the it's the um, not an HTTP style URI. It's uh, right because it wants them to be colon slash yeah, slash. Exactly, yeah. Yes, and that that goes back to because curl only supports colon slash slash URIs or URLs. So we never did the parse the generic enough to support the others because it was never a point for curl to do that because mm -hmm. it doesn't support any such protocol. Makes sense. Yeah. So that's so it, yes, it's limited to that. Uh, otherwise, it supports those URIs according to RFC thirty nine eighty six. So if you just if you use that subset, it will support them with some caveats because it also supports a few other things. Because uh, in the real world, nothing is using URIs as thirty nine eighty six says. So uh, now you. Okay, I could say it like this. Some yes, a lot of things URIs. are using URIs that way, but there are also a lot of things that are uh, extending what the URI is, or assuming that the, that the others will understand when you do other things. Uh, for example, and, and of course that is brought by the browsers because they don't follow that spec, so they sort of they yeah they <laughs> bring they lure people into the dark side and do funny things. So we have accepted that in curl, and we accept some of those funny things just in order to be le have less problems. Like for example, if you would do that colon slash slash with only one slash, does it work? Yes, it works with curl, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we do that just because uh, sort of the, 
the weird in between land between browsers and URIs. It's, it's hard to take a stand that say we should only work with URIs be because if we do that, we cannot work on the web. And if we don't work with the web, we sort of say no to a lot of curve users. But I'm also never been prepared to go all the way and say we should go with what WG um, URLs. So it's well, a little bit in between. Draconian validation, I mean, as long as these uh, baked in rules and when they're engaged are explicit, that's my only problem. It's like some unknown behavior that, that has been adopted um, because all the browsers do it. It would be nice to know when that behavior is happening or, you know, but the parser itself, it might it might be nice to have a strict mode, for example, remove all these Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. That could be uh, one way to do it. So yeah. just have a strict mode. And that do not, be uh, in do not accept curl, yeah. one slash or three slashes. It okay. actually accepts one or three okay. or two. Um, and I'll push back as well. There's lots of usage of URIs. Uh, like if you look at Xbox, right, but, but for example. But sure, but, but I mean, yeah, of, co there are, of course there are lots of uses of URIs, yeah. but there are also uh, countless examples of non URI examples. So, and and the world is filled with both. So you don't really you can as a mere user, it's really impossible for you to know when you're a URL or a URI or what is, what's the difference. And people have been sloppy using both terms, intermixing inter sort of mixing them for years. So nowadays, what is a URI? What is a URL? Unless you qualify that by a long sentence afterwards, there's really no way to tell. And sure, I mean, the only one these days that are really strictly using URIs, they were written in 1990, well, 2005 or whatever it was when they did okay. it, 3986, and they haven't been updated since, no. because then you still are that strict. So, yeah. And I, yeah, I've, you know, you know me, I've been on this, uh, I've been fighting the browser people for a long time for pretty much every aspect of this, and they run me over every time. And they <laughs> so it's not going to improve. And I, I, I've also for for a decade been working with people in the IETF about the, this, and everyone want, knows that this is a major issue. Everyone wants to fix it, but at the same time, nobody wants to fix it because fixing it means touching this hot mess that no one is. There's no solution to this. No one can actually even consider what the fix is here. Because the browser people, they have their vision of how to do things. A lot of IETF people, they have their vision how to do things. But in order to get a single sp standard spec, they would have to cooperate and uh, sort of agree to something. So and there's really on the no people. vision of that happening. I think it, it's less relevant. In other, uh, in other words, uh, uh, trying to draw a line between what all the browsers do with respect to this is sort of. But it, not, it, not it, it is complicated part. because they don't, it's not two different universes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, ideally you would say they are over there. They play by their rules. I'm over here in my corner. I I, I stick to these rules. People copy but a URL. There's a there's a Venn diagram here. There's an overlap, and sure. in, in that we are certainly operate in that overlap. So, so how do we do? It's not like we can just say, stay away, we are over here. Because then we won't work with them anymore, and then no. we get less relevant, so people will <coughs> get upset. I mean, people just copy a URL that works in the browser and use it on the curl command line, and then, then what? You expect it to work also. Yeah, and they do a redirect that the browsers follow. The, uh, would you expect curl to follow the redirects like, like the browsers do? Of well, course you do. That's sort of, that's a big use case for curl. Follow the redirect. Show Sorry, the redirect uses use use one slash. <laughs> uh, but I, I think people are conflating URI in a behavior with HTTP. Yeah? There's a planet-wide identity thing, and that's what our URIs. And, uh, and that, ha that doesn't imply behavior, a set of attached behavior to it. Um, this is where I come from. Like, you know, there's graph knowledge bases out there using IDs that have different behavior. Well, be what, no, no, a URI is not, a URL is not a behavior, it's an, an identifier. It's a, exactly, a URI is an ident is identifier, but I think when we're talking about, we put it into a browser and it does something, right? The expectation of what it but means But it's like, you don't even have to do it in a browser. Uh, my, my perfect example that I tend to bring up is, when you read an email and it says, in the email, 
it says http colon slash 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 example dot com. What is that? Most people will say it's a URL, mm -hmm. right? Most humans would do that. And if you ask the browser people, they certainly say it's a URL. Mm -hmm. If you run an email program, if you go, if you get that with Gmail, it'll highlight it and you can click it. Is it a URL? Yeah, most people would say that it is a URL, mm -hmm. even if it has five slashes or twenty. The more, the better. I think at some point, if the most your parsers like Gmail, it would stop mm. at some number of slashes. Have you tested? Yeah, and I know, I know that I, I've tested it with my my terminal because have, it has these highlights URLs that it detects on screen. I think that is just do, it just does it with two slashes. But you know the the, the browser spec it has no limit to the number of slashes. Oh. It, everything is a URL. It, you can have eight thousand slashes. It's still a URL. Okay. So. It, it is. It, is, it doesn't define a behavior. It just say they just say if you can parse that, it is a URL. So, but it's not according to curl. And true will certainly want to say it's a URL. It doesn't. Rubbish. I didn't work. But and, and perhaps one one the, and the one that is perhaps most frequent in our project is the space. HTTP colon name slash space. Is that a URL? Well, according to the browsers, it is, right? According to the URI spec, hell no. You go to space, there can't be a space in URL. And it would need URI. A URI ends if there's a space. But there's also, again, a lot of uh, redirects go to a new URL with a space in them. So how do you handle that? It's not a URL anymore. <laughs> or it's not a URI, it's a URL. So in curl, we have this weird, <laughs> weird state. So we accept redirects to URLs with spaces, but we don't accept spaces on the command line. <laughs> 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 nice. oh. So basically, no, 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 it's not a URL. Fix it. Get a percent oh. 20 instead. But if it's a redirect, it is so we can't just hammer on the user because then someone else did it. Right. Usability and security, the eternal fight. Yeah, I'm not yeah it's a, I mean, for the browsers, it's just, I mean, they want to show the website and they are willing to accept the strangest URLs ever yeah. they, they it's, it's very browser-ish to do whatever. I mean, there's never a failure in, in the browser world, right? They do anything to just do. To do yeah. yeah. Try to suck it in and do something. Yeah. And then they just document that as the yeah. correct way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Go somewhere, display an ad. So that's where we are with Truro. I think Christian is up. Do you want to use your laptop? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you should.